Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick from NickWilt.com and in today's video I'm going to bring you guys another exciting Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to transform any photograph into a cartoon or illustration using the image trace functionality within Adobe Illustrator. So the end result that you'll get after playing around with it should be something that looks around like this. This is an image that I took a couple of years ago when I went on a trip to New York City and uh, back then I wasn't so great with the whole photography thing and so the the image by itself didn't look too great, but I saw great potential in modifying it and playing around with it inside of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. And after messing around with a couple of techniques, I got the image that you see right in front of you right now, which looks like kind of an old grungy cartoony cityscape. It looks like it could be like a backdrop or some kind of comic book or maybe an album cover or something like that. I don't know. The point is it looks pretty neat and there's some kind of application that can be done with it right here. And so I figured I'd bring you guys a little tutorial showing you how I got this effect as well as going over the image trace functionality within Adobe Illustrator. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. This video right here that you're watching right now is going to be explaining the basics of using the image trace functionality within Illustrator and then the next video is going to be showing you step by step how I was able to get this image right here from the original photograph which looks like this. So this is the original photo that I took a couple of years ago. I know it doesn't look that great but I was able to transform it into this nice looking illustration using the image trace tool. So without further ado let me go ahead and dive into Illustrator and start showing you how to use the image trace tool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually open up another copy of the little demo image that I have right here. It's actually zoomed in Quite a bit too much, but as you can see here, this is the original photo that I had to work with, and I want to take this picture and I want to transform it into a vector graphic, or more in layman's terms, a cartoon image. So to do that, I'm actually just going to resize it to a little bit smaller because it's actually quite a large image right now, and we don't want to work with a large image, especially because I'm screen capturing right now, and that kind of takes a lot out of my computer system. But essentially, this right here is the original photo that we have to work with, and in order to use the image trace functionality, you want to make sure you're selected on the little selection tool right here, or you can just press the V button on the keyboard. And before you do that, make sure you select your image and we're going to rasterize it by going up to object and clicking on the rasterize button. And what that'll do is that'll take some of the stress off of the software while it's turning the image into a cartoon because that way it has a little bit more uh, it's a little bit more familiar with the image. So with the selection tool selected, select the image and then up here as you can see we have the image trace functionality. Now you might be tempted to just click the button right there and then see what it does, but there's actually a couple of different options that we can click on in order to get more precise uh, effects done to it. So if we click on the tracing presets button that's right up here, as you can see we have a ton of different options and these are all a whole bunch of different styles that can be used to play around with the image. Now. I'm going to click on the one here that says 16 colors and what that'll do is that'll split the image up into 16 different colors and make like a cartoon um, mosaic or like a little stitched together cartoon out of 16 different colors and what it'll do is it'll actually trace the paths of everything seen in the image. As you can see right here, here's the little dialog box that says the image might be a little too large and in order to make it render a little bit better it suggests rasterizing the image. We've already done that so let's just click OK and then it'll bring up a nice little dialog box and you kinda gotta just let it do its thing trace out the paths and what it'll do right now is it'll be transferring the image and turning it into a vector graphic so let's just hold on a couple of minutes and I'll be back with you once it's finally done processing okay and now it's finally done processing and as you see right here this is a nice looking cartoon image made out of 16 colors found out throughout the rest of the photograph so I'm actually gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna resize this to fit the entire canvas and I have the canvas right here sized to exactly the same resolution in the photo so it's quite a large resolution and as you can see if I drag it out to be a little bit larger here are the advantages of using vector graphics because no matter how big or how small I make it it won't have any of those pixelized edges or anything like that because since it's a vector graphic it allows the freedom of resizing the image. Now unfortunately since I did trace it out using the image trace tool if I resize it by a large area like I just did it has to go back and process some of the uh, lines again but if we just wait for it to finish up right now I'll be right back with you. 
And of course, as soon as I say that, it automatically finishes tracing it out. So here is the initial product that we have right here, a cartoonized version of the original photograph that we have. Now, there's a couple of interesting things that we can do from here in order to tweak it further using the image trace tool. So as you notice, if I click on it, nothing really interesting happens, but I get a couple of different options up here in the image trace uh, options box right here. As you can see, there's a button here that says expand. If I click on that, what it'll do is it'll take every single individualized point right here and it'll break the image into individualized paths and groups that will allow us to edit it further, tweak things, delete things, and change the colors of things. So I'm going to click out of it right now and as you can see if I click on it, it's made it into one gigantic group. If I right click on the image and click on where it says ungroup and then click out of the image, as you notice, if I hover over certain different parts in the image, it allows me to click and select individual parts of the actual photo. And that's another one of the great advantages of using vector graphics. So if I want to change the color of this window right here, I can click on that and then I can go over to the color changing and let's say I want to make it like a magenta or purple or something. As you can see, now that I do that, I have a nice purple window up there. But let's get real. We don't want a purple window. We want to do a couple of other different things to change it around. As you can see, in the original photograph down here at the bottom, I accidentally got a little bit of the sign that was here on the street right here, and all of the text is cut off. Now, the beauty about this is I can select each individual part of the letter by holding down the shift key and clicking with the selection tool, and once I have all of that selected, if I grab my eyedropper tool by clicking the eye button, and then I click in the little blue part right here, as you can see, all of that text is gone and you can't read it anymore. And another thing that I could also do is, is you notice the sky right here is a bright white and I don't exactly like the bright white of the sky. I think I want to transfer it to be like a nice, a nice blue color so that way we can work with it a little bit more in the future. So I'm actually going to click that right up there and uh, actually I'm going to I'm going to create a nice little blue rectangle and I'm just going to try and get the blue that I want. So I think that looks good. We'll make the sky that color. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click on the sky right here. And then there's also a nice little triangle of sky up here. So I'll click on my shift key, hold it down and click on that to select both of these images. I'll grab my eyedropper tool and then click in here. And then as you notice, now the sky is blue. I'll get rid of that nice little rectangle and there we have it. We have a nice cartoon version of the original photograph that we have. Now in order to get the image that looks like this right here, I actually took the initial cartoon that we have right here, I took it into Adobe Photoshop and I edited it further by changing the colors around and also adding in a couple of different textures and that was what was able to get the effect right here. But I mainly just wanted to use this tutorial as a way to show you how to take the original photograph which would look like this, and transform it into a cartoon that looks like this. Now, there's a couple of different other options that I showed you right there. As you notice, if I went to the image trace option up here, there's a ton of different options that you can choose. And each one of these different presets has its own specific functionality. And on this little image right here, I took another photograph that I had and I used every single last one of the image trace presets to show you exactly how it would affect the same specific photo. So, if I just zoom in right here, I'm going to zoom in so that you can get the details. Actually, that might be a little bit too much too much zoom. But as you can see, this is the original photograph that has no augmentation to it whatsoever. It just dragged and dropped the original photo. Right next to it, the high fidelity photo preset actually makes it look pretty much like the original photograph. Not too many differences here. Where you start to see some differences would be in the low fidelity photo setting. Where as you can see, it's a lot patchier and it looks more cartoon-like. As you can see, the three color preset selects just three different colors and makes the image into paths corresponding to all three colors that it selects. Same thing with six colors, just with six colors and 16. I think you get the point right now. Then down at the bottom, it has the black and white and the grayscale presets. So this one's kind of like a black and white cartoonish. This one is really black and white and cartoony. This one's practically the same thing, but a little bit different. The silhouette preset didn't exactly work too well with this photo. And then the line art and the technical drawing preset just didn't do anything to that particular image. So each image has its own specific purpose. So depending on the project that you're working on, you can choose whatever preset sits uh, fits the project perfectly well and I want to last thing that I want to do is I want to bring up an example of How you would use this in a practical setting 
So if I just import this particular image into Illustrator, as you can see, I did, an, I did a nice little drawing right here uh, for a photo project that I did a couple of weeks ago. Essentially, I wanted to diagram out how I wanted to have my lighting set up, and this is just a crude example that I found out of my old, out of my old drawings. I'm not the best artist in the world, so I'm not too good at drawings, so we're just going to use this as an example. So pretend like this is an actual good technical drawing and we want to take the technical drawing or rather this picture of the technical drawing and we want to transform it into a vector graphic to use in another online presentation so in order to do that I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before I'm gonna click on the image I go to image trace and I think this time we'll do black and white logo okay hold on I'm gonna close out of this and I'm gonna try it again because I don't think that I rasterized it now you see that comes the importance of rasterizing the image so I'm gonna put that in there I'll rasterize it click OK now that we have it rasterized let's go to black and white logo okay and there we go as you can see now this part of the image is what we want the most so I'm actually going to expand the image and then I'm gonna ungroup it and now we can just start deleting stuff so I don't need any of this stuff in the top so I'll delete all of the stuff on the side here all of that a couple of these lights a couple of these lights some more of that and some of this and now as you can see I'm left with just the little fish tank with the uh, light diagram so I'm gonna actually select that I'll group it together and now since it's a vector graphic we can resize it and I'll need to definitely resize it some more. As you can see, we can now resize this, and we can take this, we can export it, we can add it into another presentation, and if this was an actually good drawing, we could put this together in some kind of presentation, and it would be a lot easier than having to put it through a scanner or trace it out using another application. You can just take the photo of the drawing, and then boom, insert it right into Illustrator, and now all of a sudden you have a vector graphic. So that that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to go over. That's a simple introduction to the image trace functionality using Adobe Illustrator. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you can take this technique and use it with other photos to create some really awesome artwork, some really awesome technical drawings, or just really awesome vector graphics. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take that original photo that I showed you earlier, and I'm going to show you how to process it through Photoshop and Illustrator in order to get the final result that you see right here. But that, anyway, that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to check out any of my other work or any of the other projects I'm currently working on, you can visit my website at nickwilt.com. The link will be in the video's description. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.